Tommy Lucchese, an iconic figure in the world of organized crime, was one of the most influential Italian-American mobsters during the mid-20th century. Renowned for his leadership of the 107th Street Gang, Lucchese left an indelible mark on the criminal underworld through his ruthless tactics and strategic mind. Early Life and Criminal Beginnings Born on December 1, 1899, in Sicily, Italy, Lucchese migrated to the United States with his family at a young age. Settling in New York City, he experienced the challenges faced by many Italian immigrants during that era. Lucchese's journey into the world of organized crime started in his teenage years when he became involved in small-time criminal activities in East Harlem. 107th Street Gang after his accident, Lucchese spent more time with members of the 107th Street Gang. Members of the gang stole wallets, burglarized stores, and engaged in other illegal crimes. The 107th Street Gang operated under the protection of Bronx East Harlem family boss Gaetano Tom Reyna. By the age of 18, Lucchese had started a window washing company in East Harlem. Anyone refusing to use his window washing services would have their windows broken. Lucchese sometimes operated from LaGuardia Political Club off East 106th Street in East Harlem. By the early 1920s, Lucchese had become a strong ally of fellow mobster Charlie Lucky Luciano and became a top member of Gaetano Reyna's crime family. The Lucchese Crime Family In 1951, Gagliano died of natural causes. As underboss and de facto street boss for two decades, Lucchese was the obvious successor, and the family was quickly renamed the Lucchese crime family. Lucchese appointed mobster Stefano LaSalle as underboss and Vincenzo Rao as consigliere. That same year, Lucchese formed an alliance with Luciano crime family underboss Vito Genovese and Anastasia crime family underboss Carlo Gambino with the long-term goal of gaining control of the commission. Lucchese became one of the most well-respected Cosa Nostra bosses of the post-war era. He maintained close relationships with New York City politicians, including mayors William O'Dwyer and Vincent Impolitari. Lucchese concentrated on the core Cosa Nostra values of making money, keeping a low public profile, and avoiding criminal prosecution. The Lucchese family came to dominate Manhattan's garment district and the related trucking industry by gaining control of key unions and trade associations. During the 1950s, Lucchese controlled a narcotic trafficking network with Santo Trafficante Jr., the boss of the Tampa crime family. Lucchese had maintained a long-time alliance with Trafficante Jr.'s father Santo Trafficante Sr., the former boss of the Tampa Mafia family and during the 1940s, helped train Trafficante Jr. In the Mafia traditions, Trafficante Jr. would frequently meet with Lucchese in New York City for dinner. Business and Influence Unlike some other mob leaders, Lucchese preferred to maintain a low profile, rarely drawing attention to himself. He focused on expanding his criminal operations through various illicit activities, including labor racketeering, loan sharking, and illegal gambling. Lucchese understood the importance of alliances and forged connections with other influential figures in the criminal underworld, consolidating his power over time. The Legacy of Respect One of the defining characteristics of Tommy Lucchese's reign was his ability to command respect, both within and outside the world of organized crime. Known for his intelligence, composure, and impeccable organizational skills, Lucchese earned the loyalty of his subordinates and the fear and admiration of his rivals. This reputation for fairness and diplomacy earned him the moniker The Legacy of Respect. Death on July 13, 1967, Lucchese died of a brain tumor at his home in the Lido Beach area of Long Island. The funeral service was held at Our Lady of the Miraculous Metal Church in Point Lookout, New York. Lucchese is buried at Calvary Cemetery in Queens, New York. Over 1,000 mourners, including politicians, judges, policemen, racketeers, drug pushers, pimps, and hitmen attended the ceremony. Undercover policemen photographed the attendees.
At the time of his death, he had not spent a day in prison in 44 years. Lucchese's first choice as a successor had been Antonio Tony Dux Corallo, but Corallo was in prison when Lucchese died. Lucchese's second choice, Ettore Coco, was also in legal trouble and served a short time as boss. Another possible candidate was Consigliere Vincenzo Rao, but he too was dealing with criminal charges. The commission finally selected Capo Carmine Tremonti as temporary acting boss until Corallo was released from prison. Conclusion Tommy Lucchese, through his leadership of the 107th Street Gang and later the Lucchese crime family, played a pivotal role in shaping the landscape of organized crime in the United States. While his criminal activities were undoubtedly destructive, his strategic mind, discipline, and legacy of respect cannot be denied. Tommy Lucchese remains an enduring symbol of the American Mafia's heyday, leaving behind a complex and controversial legacy that continues to captivate the public's imagination.